Halifax, I hope you've caught up and got your recorder on and all that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to finish off those background trees and uh, we, we can put off, we, we can put a little bit of um, highlight on top of them of course. You could use a tiny bit of this pink. We've got enough blue coming down here to to use a little bit of that pink on there. So I'm going to take a little white and a speck of that red and just a speck of the orange. We don't want it too dark. It's necessary, of course, to have the brush fairly clean. So I'm going to wash the brush, squeeze the turps out of your brush, very important. And I'm going to push the brush into the paint, which is rather flat on the palette, and run along with just a tiny little bit of highlight on top of these guys. I'm turning the brush around a little bit so we get a series of, of different sort of shapes on the highlighting. And we don't really need much more than that because I'm going to put uh, a bush up here and a tree and I'm going to put a rather uh, large tree up on this other side here. So that, that will probably be enough. I'm just going to put that little bit of paint up the top of the palette there in case I need it at a later stage. And I'm going to run up some little trunks. Now with that area at the bottom of the bushes darkened a little bit, it's quite easy to run these little trunks up and they show up sufficiently for you to, to get away with. Just gently, gently run that up there. And I'm going to run also, you'll notice that these bushes over here are not grounded. We don't have anything underneath them. So I'm going to run a little bit of this Australian red gold along there. And we could pull it away a little bit in the water, I guess. A bit of burnt sienna would be okay as well. Burnt sienna and white's a lovely colour. Um, and I'm just going to sort of make it rough there where it introduce it into the bushes to some degree. A little bit of straightening it away and form it into a little bit of grass or whatever. We don't want a straight line in other words. And the bottom of these bushes here, we need to just run along and and turn the little bit of extra paint at the bottom there, we turn that into shadow. Let's bring this guy down a tiny bit more here. And that's about all we need, as easy as that. Incidentally, you could have some little bits of color within this mountain here, this hill. And um, if you come along to one of my workshops, and there, there will be a workshop in your, um, in, in your area, in your city, Perth, uh, Sydney, Melbourne, etc. Uh, and you can get the details on my website, Ken Harris Art School, www.kenharrisartschool.com.au. Uh, look it up and uh, have a look at the dates and uh, come along to it. You would really enjoy it. I'm going to take a little bit of orange and Payne's grey and I'm just going to run the tiniest little bit of shading under these trees. Now generally speaking in the background of the terrain of the ground Normally you try and get it, the, the ground itself, fairly light. Uh, but, and, and we do have it reasonably light here. Uh, but the bushes themselves, as I mentioned before, they need this little bit of shadow at the bottom to make them look as if they're, they're grounded. And a little bit of grass in front of them is ideal. However, we don't want to take over the painting with this grass. We just want the tiniest little bit of shading along here at the bottom of it. 
like so. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to put uh, some really heavy bushes in here and I'm going to use my larger brush for that and the, the Payne's Grey would be ideal for it. But because I'm going to use two different types of bushes or uh, trees, I'm going to change the colour a little bit uh, with them and in this particular case I'm going to put in uh, one that is quite heavily highlighted with a little bit of that viridian green and, and a, a tiny little bit of white. And I have some olive green here which might be suitable for the, the, the base of the bush itself. Now, I don't want to get this paint too thick. And olive green is somewhat translucent. So, we just run that on with moderation. And then we'll come back and highlight it with a little bit of this green here. It's not light enough. If you have a colour that you, we could try this other green here. Yes, that's ideal. Um, if you have a colour, when you put it on, if you, if you have a colour that you're not happy with, immediately, then do something about it. Because, believe me, that colour's still going to be there when you finish the painting, and you're going to wish you had done something about it way back when you put it on. So correct the colour if it's not right immediately and um, then you'll, you'll be a lot happier in the long run. I know it hurts sometimes to do that. Sometimes you even have to scrape the, the paint off and we show you how to do that in the workshops. The workshops are fully comprehensive. We show you how to correct your mistakes, how to basically paint your painting of course and, and correct your mistakes and it's just as important to be able to correct the mistakes as it is to make the mistake in the first place with the intention of having it correct of course but we all make mistakes and uh, it's quite easy to make a mistake and we get lots of students that, that do do that and we show them how to go around correcting those mistakes. Very important. Now this colour is Payne's grey and orange and you'll notice that I've pushed the Payne's grey a bit and made it considerably darker so that it will stand out against this guy in the background separating the two the two trees bring that down here and I'm going to put just a little bit through here and I'm going to highlight that with a little bit of yellow ochre. You could use a little orange. You could use a little Australian red gold. You could use a little bit of orange with yellow green. Wonderful colour to highlight the trees with. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow green in as well anyway. But yellow green and burnt sienna is a wonderful highlighting colour. But that's about all we need for the time being. I'm going to run up some little trunks there and we'll use a little bit of burnt sienna with uh, a tiny bit of white and we'll see how that looks. Pick that up and we'll run that up through the tree. Well, that just about is bright enough to see. We don't, you, you either have to have it bright enough to see or dark enough to see. One of the two, shade it. Um, and of course, what I'm getting at is if we use a little bit of burnt umber here, you notice it's a, it's a darker colour than the background colour, so it shows up. But then you've got to ask yourself, do you want something really dark? Or do you want something light? Well, this is on the outside of the tree, and I feel a little bit of something light in places is good. 
and a little bit of something dark is quite appropriate as well. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to run in a house here, and um, uh, the, the top of the house is about there, the top of the veranda, and um, I'm going to run the roof up, Asian type house, I have a sweeping type of roof, and the walls will come down here. And it's on some stumps, this guy. Maybe it floods here. But the photograph I have clearly shows that it's on stumps. Now, you can use a, a small brush. Now, th this is a little sable brush. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a, a little um, a synthetic hair brush nylon type thing um, and and these teclon or nylon brushes have come an awful long way in recent years they're they're, they're quite nice to use uh, at years ago i used to use uh, a lot of sable brushes um, and there's all grades of sable you can get all different qualities in sable uh, but most sable brushes were just wonderful to use um, and um, and since they've introduced the Teclon and these other synthetic fibres, I find that a lot of them are excellent to, to paint with. So I'm going to take off a little bit of that green paint here because it's just going to give heaps of trouble. This knife is very, very sharp and it will lift that paint quite easily. It's like shaving the paint off. It takes it off quite easily. And I'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber to shade it underneath the, the roof here, but it's just about time for a break. So I would suggest we come back after the break and finish this, this off. So I'll, I'll, see you, I'll see you after the break and we'll, we'll get into that building and finish it off. Thank you.